Hey there everybody, it's Nathan Cool with NathanCoolPhoto.com and in this tutorial I wanted to talk about flash settings. Now one of the things that I talked about mostly in my interiors book and some in the advanced editing book is that you really want to go by the histogram as you're shooting real estate photography. It's one of the quickest ways to see how you're exposing and while you're shooting in RAW you've got some flexibility to do that. Now I've got some links down in the description for this video where you can go to that series if you haven't picked up any copies of those books. But you probably won't need them for this video but it would help to actually see what I'm talking about. I'm going to cover a few different situations to talk about using both of these types of lights. Now most common is using just a speed light and of course that's the inexpensive way to get into it and you can do quite a bit with one speed light with two speed lights and for a young new that costs 50 to 75 dollars it's a lot less expensive than buying a self-contained mono light like the uh, the Explore 600 which costs about 500 600 dollars. Now none of this needs to be TTL so you can save yourself some money on that. I explain that throughout the books as well. It's going to be just all manual settings. And that's where it gets tricky for a lot of people because if you're used to using TTL and just everything's automatic, well, what do I do about the manual settings? Well, one of the reasons for using manual settings is so that you get consistency between each shot because a lot of times you'll be taking more than one frame to composite things together and want to make sure that you're consistent as you're shooting different angles of a room. It makes post-processing go a lot faster and it, although it may seem daunting at first if you're used to using completely automatic everything, trust me, it's really not. First, some basics and I'll show you some examples. So, if you were to be full power on a speed light it's equivalent to being at one quarter power on a 600 watt second mono light. So one quarter power on the mono light on an Explore 600 or a Rove light is equivalent to full power then on a speed light. So that kind of gives you a judgment on what you can do with it, how far you can push it. And once again, one of my favorite exposure settings for interiors is to try to use an ISO around 320 and then use a f-stop at about f6.3. If you're using a speed light, you can use a, a smaller aperture like around 7.1, maybe even 8 if you're using a big enough light. And I explain those reasons why too in the interiors book. So I won't get into that, but let's take a look at first a few rooms where this can come in handy. So this first room here, this is an ambient shot, and in this ambient shot we can see that there's a lot of light that's coming in through this front window, this front bay window, and obviously that's way too much ambient. So we want to knock out that ambient with having then our flash shot, which by the way will be then for the flash ambient blend when we put those together. We want to be able to knock out that ambient. So to do that, what I've done is I've used, instead of a speed light, I use the Explore. Now there was so much light coming in through that window that using the Explore 600 facing up to the ceiling, it had high ceiling so I had plenty to bounce off of, I used more than a quarter power. So I was at about a quarter plus 0.03 and about uh, then also 0 0.7. So it was about, uh, I should say, a quarter plus uh, 0.3 and plus 0.7 and that gets me up there. So I'm not quite at half a power but I'm still above a quarter power on the Explore 600 which means that one speed light wouldn't have done that trying to bounce that off of the ceiling. Now I could have used two speed lights and an easy way to do that is if you have one on a stand and then you have another that's on a belt. So this is one of these uh, spider monkey clips and it goes right on your belt. I carry that around no matter what because there's other rooms I will do with just a single speed light and I don't want to carry a stand around. And then when you're done it just clips back into it and you can wear this on your belt, on your pocket. I have a lot of times because I'm not wearing a belt like on today. I'll just go ahead and clip that onto my pocket and then I can just clip that right on my side and then as I'm walking around the house like oh I need a little extra power that guy comes off, boom, now I've got two. So what I could have done for that room is instead of using let's say the Explorer 600 at uh, a quarter plus uh, 3, 0 0.3 or a quarter plus 0 0.7, I could have used then this guy at full power and then another one of these at about a quarter to a half power. So that's another alternative you can do. It's a lot more work though, so that's why I do recommend when you're shooting rooms uh, that are large and you have a lot of light coming through that you want to be able to use this. Now, uh, one of the things I also mentioned in the advanced editing book is that if you use too much power, you can start getting color cast issues. So you have to be careful on that. It's like 
Yeah, if you start using more than half a power on this, that's using a lot. Remember, it's exponentially higher when it comes to light than what you would have off of a smaller speed light. So we'd be using multiple, multiple speed lights, probably about four speed lights at full power to equal about half a power coming off this Explorer. That's a lot of light to shed coming to a color cast will come off of furniture, or off of especially hardwood floors, and so that can cause other problems. So that's kind of your limit if you're trying to use a speed light. Now, when it comes to window pulls, that's another story, and that's another video for another time. This is mostly about just your, your basic lighting. So there are times when you've got too much light, and what do you do? You're trying to really overcome the ambient. Let's take this next room, for example. So lots of light coming in this room and I've got a, a hardwood ceiling and there's no way for me to bounce off of this. So this presents a lot of challenges to try to get this right. Okay. The first thing I want to do is I want to be able to get that ambient shot, use it. I can definitely use that in the flash ambient blend, but I want to be able to use this and I want to get a nice white type of bounce off of it. So you might have seen me do this in other videos as well, where what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn this guy backwards, right? So he can lean back. Now, if you did this with a speed light, you'd already lose at least a stop of power. But I could lean this back. I could use about a quarter plus 0.7, maybe up to a half. But then I grab this handy tool. And this isn't broken out that often, but it's a nice shape reflector. And just like any other round reflector, it folds away easy. But this type of shape allows me to then stand here real quick and just go boom, and then fire off a shot. And that then gives me a clean white bounce on what I'm trying to do. So what I did was I did two uh, bounces like that. And you can see this one here, and you can see then that ceiling fan shadow that's in that shot. So what I did was I took a second one here, and then when I mixed that all together with the ambient, the final product after post-processing, then with the window pull and everything looks like this. So that's a real problematic room, and that's where there's times where if you're shooting these worst case scenarios, it's probably best to really consider investment into a mono light like this. If you don't have it, if you run a real tight budget, you have to think about is it going to be a worthwhile investment for you. I would argue the case that it would be, but in case that you don't believe me, then you could try to do this with a couple of different speed lights. But once again, if you're trying to do a bounce off of some type of reflector and you're trying to hold speed lights in one hand and one in another uh, on a stand, it's going to be very difficult. And one of the things is profitability. So if you're spending let's say 15 minutes trying to get this shot with a speed light, I could do it in probably less than a minute by just using this Explore 600. That increases my profitability, less time on site, less time than in post-processing. But those are your worst case scenarios. As long as you've got a lot of light color, just like I showed in that first room, then you can get by with probably using a speed light or two to try to really uh, get a good, well-lit exposure. Here's a real simple case, though. Uh, one of the things I talk about in the Interiors book, it's called the one-stop rule. I've got videos on that, too. You can look on this channel. And the one-stop rule is, hey, I found where my exposure setting is. I just go up one stop, and I add a little bit of power. And once again, I just grab this guy off my belt, and I have him for these small rooms, like small laundry rooms, small bathrooms. I can get by with a, about an eighth uh, you know, of a power off this, so about one-eighth, maybe Maybe one quarter. Sometimes if it's really bright, a sixteenth or a thirty-second even, I found will work. But usually if you start at about an eighth for bathrooms that are light colored, then you're probably good as long as once again you're shooting at about an ISO 320 and your aperture is about f6.3. And then of course you uh, fiddle with your uh, shutter stop to see where you are with that. And once again, all these manual settings Practice makes perfect, so you want to be able to practice at home first, practice while you're on site, and see wor what works well for you, and get out of using that TTL. Let's go ahead and take a, a look at another example, and that's when it comes to a uh, kitchen. So in this particular kitchen, this is just the ambient shot, and you can see there's a terrible balance of light here. Uh, to try to even do this HDR would have been a nightmare. Of course, I prefer lights anyways, but lights really helped out in this situation because there's so much ambient light coming in over this little eat-in kitchen table that I took two separate flash shots. And you can see me here. I'm just holding that speed light that I took off of my belt, and I'm doing one shot here. I do another shot there. Now I've got an evenly lit room. So with that evenly lit room, when I combine that then together with the ambient shot, the final product looks like this. 
So that gets me uh, a lot of variation. That, by the way, wasn't just using one speed light in the distance. I also had this guy right behind me in the, what I call that distant diamond diagram that I show in the interiors book. So he's right off of here away from the wall, uh, the, the closest wall that would be in the picture. So he's in the distant diamond. But he's at about an eighth of a power just to act like another speed light. If I had another speed light handy, if this guy happened to be on a stand, I just grabbed him and probably used him at about half power. So I had about a half power speed light here. And then those pops that I did in the distance, those were done on half power on a speed light also. And that was actually at about ISO 200 to try to really get some of that white to uh, not overexpose. And then I just did a separate window pull on that as well. So that was a difficult kitchen. Now, the same technique is used also if you're up against really long rooms and large rooms. You don't want to use too much light, and that's when it's like you want small bursts of light. So a number of speed lights can help in that situation, or a number of those multi-pop bursts I talk about throughout the various books and, and uh, various videos as well. But let's move upstairs into some other type of rooms, the bedrooms. And this is another common one that you can speed through very quickly. So I'm going to show two different bedrooms. Let's take a look at this first one. So this is a light blue room and it's got, you know, some light colors. So I've got a nice white ceiling I can bounce off of and it's not that difficult. So the ambient also is reflecting very nice and it's fairly well evenly lit. So with this one, all I had to do is pop off one uh, flash shot and that was done at just a quarter power while I'm, while I'm at ISO uh, 320, F6.3 and, uh, and boom, I've got that. And then I add a window pull to it and the final product looks like this. But that was an easy one. That's a light colored room. And I also had a light colored ceiling. The room next to it was actually a different color of blue. Take a look at this ambient shot. So you can see here, this is a very dark color. Now what will happen is that when you fire a flash, just like you can see in the ambient, there's a very large disparity in the amount of light that's being shed everywhere. So the, the walls are gonna soak that up. They're not gonna reflect it back. So you're gonna lose a lot of flash power. In this room, to get enough flash power, like this shot here, this is the flash shot, that required full power on the Young Nuo, even though I'm using ISO uh, 320 F6.3. And then I added a window pull to it, and the final shot looks like this. So you could see even just a room like that, if it had a darker ceiling, I'd be even up against a worst case scenario and I might have to do a bounce like I did off of the, uh, this uh, Explore 600. So you can see that that final product off of that shop has a lot of benefits to it. It's, it's evenly lit. I've got then also the color cast gone off of that warm glow that was trying to be detected by the auto white balance and by using a light, Actually, in this case, it was just a speed light. I've got that nice 5500 Kelvin. I've got good white bounce that came off the ceiling. In the other cases where I had that large room with the wood, I went ahead and used that an Explore with a bounce off of it, and that gets me about everything I need. So kind of to sum it up, let's start with the easiest to the most difficult. Easiest, if you're doing laundry rooms and small bathrooms, try to do a one stop, one and done. So you find where your ambient is, you, where that's a good balance with according to the histogram, you go up about one stop and just fire that off. Now there's some other tricks I show to, to light some of the showers, to, um, to, to get some pop in there, and to also avoid some of the reflections by shooting off the floor. And I've got other videos on that. And of course that stuff's in, uh, most of that's in uh, my interiors book and advanced editing book as well. So that's what we do for the, the small rooms and that'll get you by in quick, quick, quick. I usually leave them to the last so I can just be out of there really quick. Um, and also by the, the first ones that I'm usually that's the more uh, exhausting ones. So then moving up from there, when we move into kitchens, that's when it starts getting tricky because kitchens can have dark cabinets or they can have very light cabinets like I showed in that uh, one example. So using a speed light can be difficult, but usually if you start at about a half power on those kitchens, then you're doing really well compared to using the speed light in the small bathrooms and laundry rooms where you're about an eighth of a power, maybe a quarter power. In kitchens, you start moving up to a half power, sometimes to a full power. If you're really at that section though of using a full power on your uh, Young Nuo your, or your other speed light, I want to think about using two or doing some other compositing to get that. The hardest ones though are once you get into the larger living areas. Those also can work off composite so you can also then use multiple speed lights to, to try to get some type of good light balance throughout the room but for the most part to get through it as quickly as possible for main living areas I do recommend using an Explore 600 or some other like a Rove light that's about 600 watt seconds. Something at least that's more powerful than just a speed light to get you there. But if all you have is a speed light, you're going to be working off full power. Think about bringing two, keep one clipped to your waist, one on a stand, and that way when you need that extra power, you can pull the other one off and add that little bit of extra juice to the picture.
Anyways, I hope this video was useful for you and that you can use some of these techniques in your photography as well. If you did like this video, you can subscribe to my YouTube channel. It won't cost you anything, and as soon as one of these videos is posted, you'll be the first to know. Thanks a lot for watching. Until next time, take care, be safe, and get out there and shoot something.